guys welcome to Gemma Bee Makes I'm Gemma and this is my crafty podcast where I talk about all the things that I've been making over the past couple of weeks um, I tend to talk about knitting crochet spinning sewing got a little bit of quilting this week um, lots of crafty rabbit holes to dive down um, as usual I come to you while my little boy James is asleep upstairs it's a uh, nap time for him he's two so nap times are not going to be uh, lasting for much longer. Gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do when there's no more nap times. <laughs> anyway, um, my older boy, Edward, he's seven. He's gone out with his daddy um, learning how to ride his bike properly. He's nearly there. He can do it independently, but he's got that little wobble that he needs his daddy at the side of him still. So uh, yeah, I've got to kind of uh, get through all the things that I've been making um, as fast as I can. So I'm really, really sorry if, uh, yeah, if this comes across as a bit rushed. It's because I'm rushing. <laughs> I'm already out of breath. What's that about? Oh dear. Um, so I'm going to start by um, showing you one of my finished objects because I've actually got a little bit of a finished object this week. And that is a pair of socks. So, these pair of socks are knit up in coastal colours. Let's have a little look. I've got the rest of the ball, but not the thing. So, this is coastal colours and they are um, Lindsay and Graham. They came to show us how to do, um, how to dye yarn about a year or two ago now at the Guild, uh, the, the Guild of Spinners, Weavers and Dyers. Um, I am part of the Bradford branch. And um, I saw this at my local yarn store and they don't actually have any indie dyed yarn at the local yarn store. It's a lot of acrylic and I mean, there's some nice stuff, but there's none of it. Um, everything's in balls rather than skeins, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but I, I came across this and I was like, oh, I really enjoyed my date coastal colours. I need to get it. This colour kind of screamed out to me. It is, um, let's have a little look. 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% silver sparkle and it doesn't have a colour wear name but it's just some lovely purples, teals, greys and lots and lots of sparkle and I bought this the other day, it was new into my stash and I'd balled it up the next day and I'd knit a pair of socks. I really enjoyed this yarn <laughs> and I've got quite a lot left over as well so I think I might be able to get another pair of socks out of that, or at least a shorty pair anyway. I really enjoyed the colours, I really noticed that there's a bit of grass. So, yeah, <laughs> you can tell I've been knitting in the park with the boys. <laughs> um, but yeah, super duper sparkly. I really, really enjoyed that, it was really nice. And it kind of got me into a little bit of a sock kick as well. So I'm going to enter these into um, LNS Crafts, her ENC Sock It To Me cow. I think that runs through to the end of July. What month is it? Oh my gosh, it's like next week. I better pop it up already. <laughs> um, but yeah, because I was knitting on the socks and I haven't knit socks for ages. Well, I have, but they are a secret test knit that I can't show you yet and I've nearly finished them. Um, but yeah, I've been doing a little bit of test knitting. I can't show um, you guys. I decided to have a little look through all my um, project bags. Um, there's whips in there that I haven't seen for ages. So some things got frogged the other day um, and I had all these yarns left over from when I last did a blast pair of rainbow socks and I thought, do you know what? I can get another pair of rainbow socks out of those. So I cast myself on another pair. So these is my own uh, slip stitch design. These are knit up in, I think this is Coop Knit Socks Year. I can't remember the colour. And these rainbow minis are from Wild Bobbin Yarns. I picked these up on Etsy a very long time ago. Um, but I, I just fancied uh, doing another pair. This time I didn't put the slip stitch pattern on the bottom. My lovely friend uh, Mel Brown brought this to my attention uh, when she'd recently knit a pair. Actually, you don't really want a slip stitch uh, texture on the bottom of your foot, so I thought I'd better knit another pair too. That's a very good point, Mel. <laughs> so my other pair that are in uh, my gift box for Christmas time might have to just become, um, I don't know, like bed socks or something, because uh, yeah, nobody wants to walk on a slip stitch pattern. 
so I thought I'd make another pair and I'm just uh, ready to put in a sharp row heel so it's just a small like um, toe up I think it starts as Judy's magic cast on um, increased up and then this easy peasy slip stitch pattern um, for anybody that um, might want the pattern um, just give me a shout you can have it I think I might write it out and pop it on Ravelry for free if anybody wants it um, I might make that my mission for this uh, particular time and I yeah you're all very welcome to it it's an easy peasy one to have a go at um, so they're the socks that I've been doing um, I have also been knitting like I said I've been doing secret um, secret socks that I can't really show you and I've made them small so they're Edward's Christmas socks as well um, I'll show you when I'm allowed. I think it's September time. Um, I've also been knitting a little bit on my brioche. No, it's not brioche at all. It's a hoodie shawl cardigan by Suzanne Summer. And um, I'm on the sleeves. I showed it in the last episode. I haven't knit much on it. However, I have been knitting on my hand spun jumper. So this jumper, <laughs> see the reveal? is the Caitlin crop by no <laughs> it's the Jupiter crop by Caitlin Hunter um all knit up in my hand spun yarn all the yarn all the fiber sorry came from John Arban textiles all in various different bases um I think I've made a bit of a cardinal sin by making a jumper out of different bases but you know each their own hobbies are hobbies um not a cardinal sin sorry that's that's a bit over the top somebody had pointed out the other day that people don't normally put different kind of bases within the same garment well I do what I want so <laughs> these are my hobbies I will hobby them how I want um they weren't criticizing they were just saying people don't normally do that anyway I do so I can't remember what all the bases are off the top of my head. Um, if you go back into further episodes, they are all there. And I think once I've finished, I will go through them all again. But this is my progress so far. So last time everybody saw it, I think I was up to the second repeat. Let me see if I can do this. Um, I was up to the second repeat here. So I've done another repeat and cast off the body. And then I've picked up the arms and I'm knitting a sleeve guys I'm so happy with it it's turning out so well it fits really well I'm really happy with the fit um I'm a little bit scared to block it to be honest because I really really don't want to stretch it out so I think I might just give it a very light block so I give it a really good soak and let it let all the the stitches set um and hopefully I won't stretch it out too much because the fit's really really nice as it is um, I'm really yeah it's going really really well I'm happy with it um, so like I said it is the Jupiter crop stitch pattern um, but because of the different gauge and the different sized yarns I've made up all the different construction um, and all the different numbers so actually it's not it's just the the color work pattern from the Jupiter crop um, but my own construction because the crop is a crop and not a full length jumper with full length arms which is what I'm going to be doing I did run out of the yarn I think I told you guys that didn't I so I did run out of the main color of the blue um, but I spun some more and actually it's been um, tour de fleece so tour de fleece is um, an event a spinning event that has been running what usually while the Tour de France goes ahead but there's been no Tour de France but we've done the fleece instead I think there's two there's going to be two so there'll be one when the Tour de France actually runs later on in the year um but this event run from the 27th of June to the 19th of July oh, I haven't seen you for a while have I because I didn't show you anything I showed you what I was going to spin but not what I did so I spun the rest of the colour so this is Aquarius by John Arban Textiles and this was the rest of the um, the fibre that I had for the jumper so I thought I might as well spin the rest of it and uh, 
then I have more for the jumper. I think there's about 45 grams here, maybe a little bit more. I did another skein as well. I managed to get three little mini skeins and I've already knit them into the jumper. So this is the one that I've got left and I've also got um, this ball here. So lots of yarn. I don't have to worry about running out of yarn again because I have lots. Um, Tour de Fleece. I also, so I joined um, team Hilltop Cloud, uh, Katie from Hilltop Cloud. She did a bit of a mystery spin along. You chose two colours, but you received four. And this was the yarn that I made out of it. I was really, really happy with it. So it's super duper soft. Um, what I did was split the fibre into um, their separate colours and I spun them in five gram, I split them into five grams. I think they were 25 grams each. I split them into five grams and I spun them so they would stripe and then I chain plied it. Uh, my chain plying has got something to, uh, yeah, could definitely do with improvement. I did a little bit of chain plying at the very beginning of my spinning journey and uh, was happy with how it turned out and looking back mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so it's a little bit uneven but I think it's going to look absolutely beautiful when it's all knit up it's a really really nice self-striping yarn so um initially I wanted to make socks but it's a very very fine merino it's 14.5 microns and um I think after one wear wearing socks it would wear straight through. So I think what I'm going to do um, is make a scarf or a cowl. I might make a lacy cowl um, and you'll be able to see the self striping through that. Or maybe a hat. A nice hat. What do you think? Um, but yeah, it really has now put me in the mind though to make some yarn to make hand spun socks. I would really like to make some hand spun socks. So I've been on the lookout for some um, like merino nylon to spin. Um, and my lovely friend Sue sent me a couple of links the other day of um, some merino nylon she's found um, and some really cheap as well. So Wingham, Wingham, World of Wingham, World of Wool. I can't remember it's called Wingham. Anyway, Wingham. <laughs> They had some merino nylon that was really cheap um, but it was it's just plain it's just well it's undyed and I'd like a really nice indie dyed one so if anybody knows of any lovely indie dyed really pretty braids of merino nylon please give me a shout out uh, link me in um, and tag me on Instagram because I really want something lovely and nice and I also so more spinning Tour de Fleece, while I was spinning, I spun every day. I was very happy with myself. I either did just 10 minutes or I did the evening or I did a nap time. So it didn't, it was very, very varied on how often I spun. I didn't seem to, I haven't spoiled it for myself, which I'm really happy about because last year I did. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it this year. So I think my thing is that I need to not lead a team and I just need to, don't be in charge of anything, just spin. That's, that's me. Oh, my legs are it. I'm going to have to have a little squidge. Um, so, yes, so what did I do? I spun the rest of this one. I spun this for Hilltop Cloud. I spun a little bit of BFL. This is my own hand-dyed yarn. No, on, on hand-dyed fibre. I felted this a little bit, I think, when I was dyeing it. So I dyed it and it all seemed to come out well, but when I was spinning it, it was a little bit felted and I had to really, really draft it, really, really pull it apart to get it to spin. Um, and there's a slight variegation um, within the yarn. I think it'd probably pick up a little bit more when it's knitted, um, but actually it was supposed to be three different blues and it just has turned to mush. So a little bit disappointing with that. Although the spinning's, you know, it's turned out, it's turned out nice, and I think it'll, um, it'll knit up lovely, and it feels really soft. 
So I've not felt, I've not like really felt it. It was just not the easiest thing to spin. Didn't really enjoy doing this one as much as I did like these. Um, and then I also have a full, well, kind of a full bobbin of singles here. Where have I got the rest of it? Let's have a little look because I can't remember what it's called. This is the Yarnadelic base from um, John Arban Textiles. Oh, Galetta Guitar. So, um, and this is a really, really lovely colour. And this uh, little wheel here is the electric eel wheel nano and it is my favourite thing to use at the minute. In fact, I have spun everything I have here on my electric eel wheel and I've really, really enjoyed spinning on it. It's been lovely. It comes out a really, really nice fine wit. Um, so I have the rest of the fibre here ready to go. Look at those colours that are through there. It's just so nice. Super fuzzy. Um, yeah, Yanadelic from John Arben. I am a big John Arben fan. I love his, um, I love all the fibre that I've spun from there so far. I don't think there's anything um, that I haven't bought from there that I've not enjoyed. It's, it's all been lovely to spin. So that has been my Tour de Fleece. Now Tour de Fleece is over. But, you know, spinning's not, so that's good. <laughs> now I've got lots and lots of hand spun to, to go at, ready for um, the next projects. I don't know what they are yet. Don't ask me, I don't know. Um, so what else have I been doing? That's all my spinning and my knitting. I've been doing a little bit of crochet. So this is um, the Mystery Crochet Along by the crochet project now it's all finished i am very behind in my clues i think there's five clues in total um and i have started clue four so i'm not too far not too bad lots and lots of ends of two of these so clue one was these lovely little motifs and clue two had us putting them together and doing this awesome ripple pattern throughout with um, post stitches that's really cool so I've got two of these I think yep so two of those that was clue two um, clue three was these lovely little flower motifs so I thought they were really really cute now we made three of these, so no sorry, six, six of these little flower motifs. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so that's clue three, and clue four has you put them together, and they're just a slightly different ripple, it's kind of the same, but it's uh, the opposite way around, sort of. Um, yeah, I put it together, and that's as far as I've got. So as you can see, I've I've started doing the next one, um, but that's as far as I've got. So I've got two more to put together. Two, yeah, one, two, yeah, two more of the these ones to work through, and then clue five, the final clue, has you joining them all together uh, with a little bit of extra in between. Um, and I've seen some people's finished ones, and they look absolutely lovely. They're really really nice. It does look like some people have some tension issues with their clue one being a lot bigger than um, the rest and it's supposed to be that the clue one is the same size as clue three, oh, so many ends uh, as clue three. Um, yeah, mine is definitely, definitely smaller, uh, but I haven't blocked these, whereas I blocked these. So actually, I think what I'm going to do is... Um, give it a really good stretchy block once it's all put together and hopefully it should turn out nice. A lot of things, a lot of people's projects that I've already seen have turned out really, really good. So the yarns that I'm using are, um, is Hey Sister Yarn Co in Pulse. Uh, 
<laughs> turn it around this is hey sister yarn co uh, gilded and this is some twist tangle fibers naturally dyed with madder um, and these two are an mcn and i think this one might be a bfl but it's everything is is feeling lovely um, and i think the colors work really really nice together and it'll be nice once it's all put together and all finished everybody's like I say, the, the projects that have been finished look really, really nice once um, the finished product looks good. So I'll be happy when that's all done. Um, I haven't actually worked on it a lot um, because I've been enjoying my other hobbies. That's what hobbies are about, right? You work on what's enjoyable at the time. Um, I did have a little bit of hobby guilt the other day when I thought, oh, I really should be working on this. Why? Oh, I'm just going to dive into this instead. And I had to slap myself out a little bit because why would you ever feel guilty about doing a hobby didn't yeah <laughs> random random hobby guilt um i did have a little bit of a route through all of my uh all of my projects and uh, uh some things got frogged the other day and uh pulled out all the uh, or like i said i said didn't i that i've my little slip stitch there, that's how you find things, right? You find your, um... oh, I'm talking rubbish now. Shut up, Gemma. <laughs> You're going too far off uh, off topic. There's babies about to wake up. Okay, I'm going to carry on talking. Not about guilt. What else have I been doing? So that was my crochet. So I've done knitting and spinning and crochet. And I have also <laughs> different dove, like head first down English paper piecing because I have enjoyed it so much. So on last episode I showed everybody a little bit of English paper piecing that I'd been doing um, and I finished. It's just a big pillowcase, sorry it could really do with being ironed, it's been used and it's been put on beds and um, it's been washed again so it could probably do with an iron now. Um, but this was my first little foray into English paper piecing and it was some leftovers that I had. Uh, so five quarters and I thought I'd uh, make a pillowcase for James's bedroom. Um, so I English paper pieced them all together and I appliqued it onto uh, this jersey fabric that was um, just in the stash. So this is all about stash busting. Let's get rid of the stash because if we empty a drawer that's full of scraps, then I can fill it with nice material that I can make for me. Right? That's how that works. It does in this house. So lots of scraps. I popped some little poppers on there. Not very uh, well done, but I thought they matched. They matched the material. And I had a little go at quilting. So I don't know if you can see there. What I've done is I've stitched in the ditch. So I've stitched around each hexagon and I've also put a little bit of patterning around little fox and some little arrows in the, um, the peachy colour. Just to have a little go and just to see what, see, see what the crack was about. That, that part took a long time and I think I could have kept going forever and ever. Um, but I thought those little highlighted bits actually looked quite nice. So. And once I'd finished this, I actually missed doing the little stitching and I thought, right, I am going to get those bags and bags of baby clothes that I have upstairs um, that I have been saving for what reason? I just because I can't get rid of them and they're so little. I don't want to get rid of the baby clothes. I want to keep the baby clothes. So when uh, Edward was little, he's seven now, um, when he was growing out of his clothes, I gave all of his clothes to my lovely friend Alex and she made a quilt out of them. And it's something that we still use to this day. It's always been on um, Edward's bed. It's now on James's bed um, and we use it all the time. So I thought I, I can make a quilt this time. I don't have to give my clothes to Alex. I can do it this time. So I pulled them all out and I thought I would English paper piece with them. So. These are all, so all the white ones is, 
and um, these are all the little onesies that had little bits of pattern on, little stars there, what have we got there, little elephants and more stars and more hugs and kisses and things. I have got another pile here that were the darker colours and leftovers. Um, so some of these are leftover material from like when I've been, uh, so what's this? So I know this one um, actually was one of my tops, but it's leftover jersey that will go quite nice in the quilt. And this one was leftovers from a jumper that I made from my grandma. So some of it is leftover material. This one, feathers. It's all scraps and it's all going in. So I cut lots and lots and then I've been making these big flower garden style um, blocks. So I just thought this, so this was a little t-shirt that was James's like, and I tried to highlight the little pocket there. I don't know if you can see very well. I know the color and lights rubbish, but that, that middle one is little pocket and little elephants. And then I've got the green feathers and little bunny rabbits and some dandelions and stripes. We've got blue with stars. Um, we've got quite a cute little raccoony one, burgundy with little writing onesies. We've got elephants. Uh, that's the Paisley one with little raccoons and dinosaurs and stars. So I have eight. I've got eight of these really big patches. Um, I don't have enough of any more big colours to make another big patch because ideally I could do with nine. Eight doesn't really go together like I could do four by two but the shape is not really very good but I have as you can see I have lots and lots of squares so I lots and lots of uh, material ready to make some more I also have a little bag I have not brought it I have left it over there but I've got a bag um, kept and I'm gonna start making little six little six ones because they fit nicely in between so that is my next, the next stage. I've already been making the hexagons ready to sew together. I've got three little sixes, little sixes, um, ready to start hand sewing together. So these are all hand sewn together using English paper piecing. You can see on the back there. And I have loved every single minute of it. It did get to a little point where I think I was, I made like one a day for, well, for eight days. So I think I did about nine days in a row when this is all that I was doing. I really, really enjoyed it. But my fingers really started to hurt and I thought I'm gonna have to buy a thimble. I thought, oh my goodness, I am the lady that needs to buy a thimble. And I don't care one bit. I am loving it. Um, yeah <laughs> so uh so i can imagine quite soon i will have um a lot more of my quilt to show i say it's a quilt it's just blocks at the minute and i think i'm gonna have to do some kind of design work of putting them all together so i'm gonna make these small six six what they're called i think they're called an uh, english no garden flower garden so they're, they're little flowers aren't they so it's called a flower garden pattern, I believe, if my Pinterest um, searches are anything to believe. So, yeah, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. More, more crafty rabbit holes. Um, but that's everything. That's everything that I've been working on. So there's quite a lot, but I zoomed through it, didn't I, today? I might actually be able to have a cup of tea now because they're still out playing. And James hasn't woken up. <gasps> Yay! Okay. That's everything guys. That is all I've got. I don't think there's anything else. I'm sure there's lots and lots of things that I want to talk to you about, but I can't actually think off the top of my head. I got new glasses. I chopped all my hair off. Did you see? 
How curly is it now? Curly girl is uh, getting there. <laughs> it's still a little bit frizzy, but oh my goodness, it's it's so much lighter. And washing your hair when you've chopped a good eight inches off of it is like such a breeze. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't think of anything else to tell you to you guys now. I'm sure as soon as I turn the camera off, I'll be like, oh, they didn't say about something. But anyway, <laughs> it's really, really nice to have a little catch up with you guys. And um, until next time, I'll see you all later. See you later, guys. Bye.